You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get out. Get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Well, my name ain't Alice, but I am coming to you through your Windows or your Linux, or to be more specifically, through RealLibertyMedia.com Channel 10, or RLM Spreaker Channel, or the RLM TuneIn Station, or the RLM Internet Radio Station, or RLM Radio.xyz, or 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 lots and lots of places. Yeah, that was her name is Alice by Shinedown, and yeah, I do have a tendency to be a little bit on the contrary wise, and I like it that way because you know it keeps people hopping. They see me smile and they go, shit. (laughs) And if you hear me laugh, you better run. (laughs) Because I'm up to something. And right now, I'm up to the radio here on this wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday. It's a wee bit breezy outside out here in Grammy Land and very, very burr. Very burr. All of my tomatoes decided that they went, ugh, ugh. It's too cold. Which, you know, I didn't have a whole heck of a lot of tomatoes left. And I picked most of the peppers that were on the plant. So that's, you know, okay. Um, But yeah. And the zucchini got froze. Oh, darn. (laughs) I bet you I probably got uh, 31-gallon bags just of shredded zucchini in the freezer. And then I canned some over the weekend so yeah I got zucchini coming out all kind of places (laughs) but I'm gonna try some new recipes so yay it's all here hey everybody over there in RLM land I will get to you in just a minute but you know what first things first I need to do a public service announcement yeah this uh I saw this this morning and I thought, OMG I need to tell people this so warning All Facebook accounts have been hacked and cloned. So to avoid this, you must stand naked on your kitchen table singing, I will survive, while doing the Macarena. Now, only then will Mark Zuckerberg travel down your chimney on a golden unicorn and present you with a special blue token to protect your account. Now you need to send this to everyone on your contact list. Otherwise, goblins will wee in your uh, fridge. So I didn't want any goblin wee in my fridge because it's kind of sticky and it makes things smell funny. You know, how you get those science experiments going on. So I shared it. <laughs> I did not dance on my table though because my ceiling fan is too low and I'm afraid I'd probably hit myself besides the fact that I had to give up table dancing several years ago because I got entirely too many people other people started doing that well it was that fireman's ball and uh, someone fell off the table because they were extremely inebriated and hurt themselves so they asked me to quit doing that <laughs> And I'm not shitting you on that one either because it used to be every fireman's ball. They always played Taking Care of Business by BTO. And that was my song. And as soon as that song started playing, I hauled ass for a table. And, uh, yeah, they had the DJ had a big old honking spotlight. And every once in a while, I would have one person join me up there on the table. But for the most part, it's just this crazy old lady up there dancing like a crazy person and having a good time and I was the sober one in the crowd too mind you (laughs) till I quit going because well then it was you know I had to babysit because my kids were old enough and I had grands and I stayed home and we played and they went out and they had the hangover the next day but yeah so my table dancing days are over I already have a golden unicorn And I have blue tokens and, oh no, those are marbles. Because I did find my marbles today while I was going through things. So yes, I have my marbles as well. So you're lucky tonight. (laughs) Although I might lose them a couple of times with some of the articles I got lined up. But hey, I got my marbles. In any case, that's pretty much the only thing going on over here on Fakie Book. Was that little public service announcement? You are welcome. 
I'm here to help. <laughs> if nothing else, I'm letting you know that, hey, you may not be as crazy as you think you are because there's someone on the radio that's way worse than you are. Okay, so let me go check out a few other places, okay? Over here on Mines. Lots and lots of people chitty-chatting over here on Mines. Hi, Shannon222. And uh, Saquadon, is that who you are? And... Uh, Robert May. Hi, Robert May. Thank you as well, darling. Hope you guys are having an absolutely wonderful evening. Yeah, there's places flooding all over the place. And out here in the boonies, high plains, you know, this is almost like a, a it's not desert, but it's pretty arid out here. And yeah, in the last couple of days, we've had over three inches of rain. Eastern part of the state, yeah, you start multiplying that by two and three. Yeah soggy there and then you get where the hurricane is which thank god miss kate is safe is sock puppet okay i don't know where socks are. i know he's down in florida but i hope he's doing okay as well in any case that's over here on mines mines.com by the way for those of you that have not come over here and joined it really is a pretty interesting site to to check out i enjoy it I learn a lot from over there. Don't interact an awful lot with people, but I learn a lot over there. Over here on this freedomsnetwork.com. Thank you, Grimner, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. <laughs> well, okay, I'm not in poison because, you know, that would mean video and y'all don't want that. I get a little crazy. Uh, and actually today I'm in warm and fuzzy jammy pants and stuff because I stayed home today. I did not have to work. Uh, let's see, so that's Mines, that's Effin, that's fr uh, Fakey Book. Over here on Twitter, I've seen some interesting things on Twitter as well. And yeah, I've, I've actually queued up a couple of them just because. Hmm, things that make you go, hmm, and looky there, I've lost a couple of stalkers. I must have turned a corner a little bit too fast for them. Oh, darn it. I've been getting lots of stalkers that, okay, in Twitter parlance, it's followers, but I call them stalkers because, yeah. And I didn't turn that speaker down. Oops, I got a gadunk going on over here from realliberty.org, I do believe. Let me turn this down. Okay, got that one fixed. Catching some hell from Michael. Yeah, Michael. Michael's not happy. What was that guy from the Halloween movies? Was that Michael? Uh, uh, things that make you go, hmm. Okay, on realliberty.org. Yay! Flash Rooney just shared a uh, blog earlier today about Real Liberty Media Radio is growing. Welcome aboard, Art Underground. Um, I was working when you were on yesterday. Darn it, didn't get to listen. Do you have a podcast, sweetheart? Or do I just have to be able to listen in somehow or another? Hopefully, I will be able to do that. Uh, let's see, what else is going on over here? Gary L is over here, as well as Rob Works and Cowboy Tech and Mental Pancakes just popped out, as well as the lovely Mary B. All kind of people over here on realliberty.org. It's kind of the... Uh, the more Facebooky social media of RLM. And it is kind of cool. It's a lot of fun being able to interact. There's some different people over here that, you know, I'm I'm learning lots. I'm learning of course I learn from everybody. It's just sometimes those lessons are not necessarily pleasant lessons, but I still learn from everyone. So that's uh realliberty.org, minds, effin, fakey book. Twitter. I think I've hit all of those. Now I need to get to the really, really important one where you need to be if you want to give me static because come on over here to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some shit. I'll give it back. It's okay. It's all good. Everybody gives each other static all the time. Sometimes you take it personal and sometimes you don't. That's kind of like in the real world as well. Um, but yeah, it's cybernetic. So, mm, so many words on a screen pretty much the way it works but I do learn lots over here as well so in the RLM I see uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays just music no po oh well thank you 
Oh, Sunday will be talk. Awesome. Yay. Thank you, Art Underground, for the little um, update on that. Okay, so in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Rob Works, you popped out. What the hell? What the hell? Who's going to do my bubbler? Tiny bubbles. Now I'm going to whine. Yes, Vinny, I'm going to whine. Um, let's see. Cowboy Tech is also here. Cowboy's always hearing pleasant voices. I love you, Cowboy. You're so awesome. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know, as well as the lovely Moose Girl is here. Moosey and Grimmy and I, yeah, it's going to be Bursey in our neck of the woods. The lovely Kate, who is safe so far. She's in one of the better, better places of that state of Florida. Duh. Oh, awesome, Art. I will have to go check that out. Cool beans. Okay, Art Underground is also here. Yay for Art. He's going to be um, doing lots of other different things. Thank you, Vinny. He, oh, yeah, over on UCY.TV. I used to go over there, and then I, you know... It's amusing to watch people banter and diss each other, but only for a short time. And I got bored with it. You know, especially when I would try and interact with whoever was doing the show and everybody else was dissing and, and pissing and moaning and groaning and whatever the hell they were doing. And I just went, eh, I'll listen, but I'm not going in that chat anymore. I, it, yeah, it just, it didn't do it for me. In any case, back to saying, hey, Chalcedony, hi, Chalcedony, how you doing? Looky there, the lovely Chloe is also here, as well as Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by his noodly goodness, Cyborgian goodness, no less. D underscore C is also here, as well as Echelon, yours truly is here, giving everybody static, and yeah, I'm just kind of squirreling through the early part. IB Don C is also here as well as Kozu. And looky there, Layer 8 is also here as well as Meister Bra. Hey, Woody, how you doing? We got a couple of poxifieds and poxophone that are actually marked away, but they're still here. Pom -po -pom -po -pon sauce is here as well as lovely Rain. RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel is also here. And Rome's, who still isn't Darth Rome's. <laughs> you know it's Halloween time. We need to be doing the creepy ass shit. Damn it! I have broom hair and don't care. And I have a broom, but and I I worked off all the slivers because yeah, it's not cool getting slivers in unmentionable places. Just saying. Skittle, the F bombinator of the RLM chat. Vinny, I see you, Vinny. I also see Apostle One is here. Hey, Apostle, how you doing, sweetheart? As well as Asmo Two, Asmo Two. Yeah, yeah, I saw that uh, a while back that Vinny had posted something about uh, UCY was no longer. Yeah, no longer, and that's that's sad. It really is, but you know, it's that's how one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. Because you get one bad apple, it starts rotten. It touches another bad apple, or another apple makes it start rotten. And next thing you know, you got all these skanky apples going on. So, yeah. Oh, seven days a week. Wow, damn. That's wow. That's dedicated art. I have trouble with two. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people that go, she does too. Oh, good God. Yeah, I do. I inflict myself upon others twice a week. Okay, Beetle! I see you, Beetle. How are you doing, honey? And looky there, Colfax 101 is marked away, but eh, still here. Remember the nick. Oh. Ah. Uh. Okay, uh, Dakota, who I'm sure is very, very bursy. I've been watching the cloud formations on the radar, and Dakotas are getting some burr. And, you know, some snow was falling out in Colorado where my grands are at, too. And today was Ride Your Bike to School Day, and my youngest grandchild, who is 10, just had to ride his bike to school. But Mommy couldn't ride with him because she had a conference call going at work, so she followed in her car. So he was a big boy, and he rode himself all the way to school, and she just kind of sort of followed with the car, and, and then she hauled ass for work, which is like, oh, man, my little man. It's it's tough to remember that, mm, 
Yes, Art. Rotten potatoes. Oh, man, they have a stank all their own. Dude, seriously. Whew. Okay, moving along. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. Oh. Hmm. I very rarely have potatoes go bad, but, mm, yeah, when they do, it's like, ah, gack. Then you have to get out the peroxide and, and the, the baking soda and, ugh. yeah, it's just nastiness. Moving along. Dakotas are freezing. Frumpy, Frumpy from Kanakistan. Hey, Frumpy, how you doing? I also see Gromit is here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house with the lovely little Lily. I'm so glad she's doing well. And looky there, Sock Puppet. He's logged in. He's logged in, so he's still got something going. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom, who is the one that did my intro for me. Thank you once again, Phantom, for everything. That was that was just so totally awesome. Um, oh, you know, my mother used to have stock in Oracle. She bought stock when it was first starting out. My brother, uh, the brother just younger than me. I got a lot of brothers. Um, the one just younger than me advised her to, you know, because she had Boeing stock and she had a few other things, but she wanted to diversify her portfolio. So she bought Oracle just as it was starting out and it, it split like three times in the first year. Yeah, she's got a really good retirement thanks to Oracle. Um, da -da, da -da, moving along. Um, pretty much everybody except for uh, over here in the red pill. Let's see. I see Aces Trump royalty is also here. Uh, C or F Canella is here. Layer eight is here. Nisquam is here. Polywanog is here. QFTW is here, and Rob Works underscore and Surly are over here in the red pill, too. So, hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. If you didn't want me to say anything about that, just just tell me, Graham, shut the hell up. <laughs> Good luck with that, but, you know, just thought I would tell you. Um, okay, so, moving along. Do Where do I want to go first? Do I want to go with something silly? Or something that makes you go, hmm? Oh, new Netflix show. Uh, yeah, Netflix is really going down the tubes. It really is. And that, of course, you know, they do have Dangleberry on there, as well as Michelle, you know, on their board of directors. So, mm, what do you expect? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Spooky PhD. Let's see. Yes. Uh, yes, I did start Apostle. Do you need to refresh, honey? Or is my... Nope, I'm still broadcasting. I'm still going out there. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go first? I think I'll go to CNN. Just because I very rarely go to CNN, but I had to go to this one simply because of some of the verbiage in it. Now, the headline, well, actually, it's the thegatewaypundit.com, but it's something about CNN. CNN's Bakari Sellers said, Kanye West is what happens when Negroes don't read. And, um, you know, I just, I saw that headline and I thought, wow, Y'all are kind of selective about how you throw your verbiage around, aren't you? Because, you know, when you're talking about someone that has a darker natural tan, someone that stayed in the easy bacon oven of life a little bit longer than, than um, I did, because, yeah, I got kicked out when I was still pasty. <laughs> I'm, I'm a Grammy cracker. In any case, um, yeah, Conway, Kanye West, which, I, I, uh, yeah. He's entertaining as well, but uh, pretty much all of it with a grain of salt. So when you don't agree with him, you know, because he is of the darker skinned persuasion, born that way, guess what? It's an immutable trait. Can't do nothing about it. But he is, then it's Negroes. But if Kanye had said something that Bakari had agreed with, he probably would have been a black man or an African American. But no, he does not deserve the hyphenation or any of that other fun stuff. He's just a Negro. 
And yeah, that's what happens when they don't read. Really? Really? Well, you know, obviously you read a script, honey. Um, you can't hear me yet, Vinny? Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to tell people to shut up too. I've I've told myself to shut up time or two, Art Underground, and it just don't work. It just don't work. Do you guys maybe need to refresh your your radio browser? Oh, Vinny, you're such a smart ass. Smart ass. But you know, the only difference between a smart ass and a dumb ass is they both went to school. It's just the smart ass came up for air more often. But um boom boom. Okay, so according to this, which was published today, last night on CNN, um said the following of Kanye West. A result of when Negroes don't read is a token Negro um an attention whore. I know they have a lot of the little asterisks, but yeah, and has mental issues. Well, well, okay, don't we all have mental issues at one time or another? But apparently Candace Owens is uh, wanting to host a debate between Bakare and uh, Kanye, which I think that would be entertaining as hell. Um... Candace said uh, she's hosting a summit with 300 plus young black conservatives in D.C. this month. I would like to offer you $10,000 to debate us on token Negroes publicly for charity. You know, you're so educated and all. Yeah, love it. Love it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Grim and, and Vinny and Java. And yay, there's Apostle. Yay. <laughs> uh, you know, Art, that's kind of sort of why I got divorced, too. Because uh, he wouldn't ever say nothing. And I would even stop to take a breath every once in a while. In any case, <laughs> moving along. I'm just going to go ahead and share this link. But I just, I found the headline, you know, those attention grabber thingies. They, you know, they grab you by your eyeballs and say, look at this, look at this. And so many people, that's all they do is read the headline. So I wanted to scroll a little bit farther and just see what the hell was going on with this. But uh, apparently they're not real happy because Kanye uh, dared to show some support for the Trump. Stillskin, which Trumple Stillskin, eh, whatever, but yeah. Um, oh, oh, well, that sucks, Apostle. Damn it all. Okay, well, I'm glad you have audio now, hun. I am so pleased. So, um, yeah, it's funny how they, they, you know, it's okay for them to say stuff. But, you know, if we were to say something like that, it's racist, racist. Well, you know what? I might be a racist um, or maybe I'm an e-racist. I don't know. Although I really, I, I try to step out of the rat race. That's about as racist as I get. Because other than that, we're a freaking human race. And if you want to talk racist shit, okay, stop diddling with critters that ain't humans. You know, when it's bad, when they have to make laws to tell you that it's illegal to have sex with your horse or your dog or your sheep or your whatever the hell, you know, and, and I did see something earlier about how they're trying to make it normal. <laughs> normal is a setting on a dryer. Or, as the lovely Morticia said one time, normal is an illusion. What is normal or what is chaos for the fly is normal for the spider. So, um, you know, I don't know where I was going other than off on a tangent. Uh, <laughs> I just, I find it amusing, you know, how these people are so freaking hypocritical. It's like, I can say it, but you can't. I can do it, but you can't. You know, that whole Kavanaugh circus with a bunch of really, really low-level clowns couldn't even juggle for doodly squat. Seriously? Y'all sucked, and the popcorn was stale. 
I am so glad that circus is behind us so we can move on to the next one that's going to, I'm sure, be equally entertaining. Piffle. Piffle. Um, but yeah, it's funny how different phrases, different terms, they can say different things or, or, you know, to them it means one thing, but to you, well, you know, it's something else entirely. Um, uh, uh, mention a Democratic congressman in New York saying that new congressmen and women need to be taught what they have to do with Israel. With Israel? Seriously? I know what we need to do with Israel. Leave them to their own devices. I say if Israel wants to make a shitty ass bed, let them clean it up. Let them make it themselves. Because I'm really, quite frankly, very tired of all of this, you know, oh, but we must do this and we must, and they're our only ally. Really? No, we are one of their little puppets on strings and we need to cut those damn apron strings or puppet strings or whatever strings it is. Actually, right now I'm thinking it's more along the lines of tampon strings because they're shoving it right up the old whiz way. Qu quit this. I know that was rude and disgusting, but it's that's what's going on over there. It's rude and disgusting and I'm tired of it. What is all of this bending over backwards? Oh, but Israel... Yeah. Oh, but when you got your own people calling you a bunch of maniacal asshats, yeah. <sighs> I don't like any government, period. Because every damn one of them, every one of them, you give them a little bit of power and they're going to start expanding on it every single one. I don't like any of them. I am an anarchist. I will proudly admit that. I have one ruler that is me. Well, I have a couple other rulers, but they're wooden or plastic, and the wooden one actually has a little metal edge on it. it scares shit out of me every once in a while because it's I go back to the nun times. I'm I'm a reformed Catholic. <laughs> oh well. Moving along. So now that I did Kanye, and I'm I'm also posting these things over in the F and site because I have found that life is so much easier and so much quicker if I post it over in the F and site where I have the lovely little thank you, bless you, Grim emoticons so I don't have to actually type shit out. And then I will put my links over on therealliberty.org and Fakeybook and Minds and Twitter and God knows where else I'll share them. But um, just so fast for me there because, yeah doing the little emoticons. I'm talking with pictures. Now, uh, I'm going to check one more thing on Twitter and then I'm going to go to my pocket, I do believe, because I love my pocket. I cleaned out some of the lint earlier. <laughs> um, what? World is quietly decoupling. Yeah, well, the world needs to decouple from the U.S. because we are the bully on the block. Quite frankly, the U.S. government is the bully on the block. So, now that I've had a funny little CNN silliness, how about I go with, I'll go with this silliness that is, I had pulled up in my pocket already anyway. This is from blogs.unibelb. Uh, um, yeah, whatever. I think it's from Melbourne. And it's from September of 2017. Yes, I got a flasher going on. Uh, no, I did not do Kanye, although I did talk about Kanye. Um, yes, rulers go with pencils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those freaking rulers with the metal. Ah. <laughs> Penguins are, are, yeah, that's their weapon of choice. <clears throat> Moving along. So. From University of Melbourne, from their blogs, from September of last year, the memeing of life, viral humor, and why it spreads. 
because, you know, everything spreads on the interwebs like a virus. Ha! Ah, I, I need to make sure that I, no, I'm not dancing on the table. Moving along. So, if you're reading this, you probably have internet access. And if you have internet access, you're probably familiar with memes. And you've seen them, laughed at them, possibly been confused by them, and probably looked at them when you were supposed to be doing something else. Guilty! <laughs> It's become increasingly clear that memes have become a major part of communication in our digital culture. They're definitely entertaining. But what's the science behind how they spread? What makes a meme go viral? Well, it has a little bitty grain of truth. And the best way to get a lesson to get stuck in, some, in somebody's head, George Carlin, Robin Williams, you know, a lot of the really great comedians were very good at this. They would take that little grain of truth and feed it to you with humor. Um, let's see. Oh, I can see him, but the name's not coming to my head. Um, there's been lots of, lots of great comedians that have... Um, Bill Hicks, there you go, another one. Feeding, feeding you those little grains of truth wrapped in humor so it's more palatable when it goes down. And then it pops up later and you go, whoa, wow, huh, hadn't thought of it like that. So why do we meme? Why do we meme? Well, what exactly is a meme? Now, despite their significance in the online community, the humble meme actually predates the Internet. The term originated in 1976 from evolutionary biologist and original meme lord Richard Dawkins. He defines memes as packages that convey the idea of a unit of cultural transmission or a unit of imitation. Much like how a gene is a package of genetic information that is transmitted between parents and their children. So modern internet memes are transmitted via social media and can be anything from images to videos to simple phrases. But where did they come from? Where do they go? Where did they come from? Okay, I'll stop m myself here. Mm. So that little reference was a meme. Did you get it? I didn't. <laughs> or maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But if you did, you just experienced one of the reasons why memes go viral. So, communications researchers have identified a few key points on why people share memes. Their social currency and emotions and they're two major keys. Some memes can be like inside jokes, and this element of social currency creates a positive emotional response. So sharing a meme can make you feel intelligent or funny or in the know. And you feel good because you get it. And it can create a sense of connection with others who also get it. Yeah, like this one. I love inside jokes. I'd love to be a part of one someday. <laughs> that was from The Office, which I never watched that show ever because it just looked, well, it just, I, I don't think I had cable TV anymore by then. Whatever. <clears throat> so besides the positive emotional connection that we get from sharing a meme, we also have emotional responses to memes themselves. Happiness, nostalgia, shock, and sadness can all be evoked by a meme, just as they can be by any other form of communication. And perhaps not so surprisingly, research has shown that positive emotions generally generate more shares than negative ones. Now, memes can also be useful, and not just when you're procrastinating about writing that assignment or doing that damn report. They can also be used to communicate a range of information, from something as simple as relatable situation or feeling to philosophical content or social commentary on current events. So, memetics. That's a real word, apparently. 
And uh, when you look at that fancy word, what does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you know how I said that memes are like genes? Well, memetics are like genetics. Old mate Dawkins loosely based elements of his meme theory on Darwin's theory of evolution. And his theory proposed that culture replicates itself in order to ensure continued survival, similar to human genes. Now he reckons that there are three main elements that memes need to have in order to be successfully spread. Fidelity. It's got to be true. A fecundity, enough people have got to see it. And longevity. Now, if it's here for a good time, not a long time, and yeah, they don't need to last forever, just long enough to spread to a decent amount of people. Now, Dawkins made these points regarding old-timey pre-internet memes. But he said that there the two are very much connected and related. So, where original memes used to spread and evolve via accurate copying and random change, internet memes are now deliberately influenced and changed by humans as they spread. So what are your favorite memes? And do you think they're changing the way we communicate? I think they are. I think they're actually, you know, those little zingers that you get when you really want to say a whole heck of a lot, but you want to be able to say it in just a few concise words and maybe put a picture there that'll grab somebody's attention while you're doing it. So, um... <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm scrolling up in the in the chat and, and Grimmy said good workers are not rewarded, just given more work, and that is so so true. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like, what? What are you bitching about? Why are you complaining? But you're necessary. We need you. You can't take time off. And then when you do take time off, well, you're going to have to get all that caught up because nobody else knows how to do that. Or this fell apart because, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Planting asparagus is a good thing to plant because it's good for 25 years and perennial. You know, I'm happy for asparagus lovers. I personally think it's Brack. <laughs> Asparagus and Brussels sprouts. I have tried them several times because, you know, I've been told that your tastes change after a while. And so, you know, I thought, okay, it's been like seven years since the last time I've tried asparagus ass. And yeah, it still tastes like ass. <laughs> Same with Brussels sprouts. Just can't go there. But I have acquired a taste for sweet potatoes, and um, which is something new in the last couple of years. And I do love my broccoli and my cauliflower. And I'm actually getting to where I can um, enjoy mushrooms occasionally. <laughs> not the fun ones, not the shrooms. But, you know, uh, in any case, yeah, asparagus. Ack. Ack. Just can't go there. My sister wrapped bacon around asparagus one time, and I said, why are you ruining bacon? <laughs> oh, well, go figure. Yeah, I know, Apostle. I just plain, thank you, dear. I just got coffee delivered. Yay, am I special or what? Um, let's see. Okay, let me do this. Get this shared over here on the F on site. Oh, wait. Yeah, we'll do that one. Because that was a good read. I enjoyed it. Now, I want to give you some, some more good news. Good news. This is from the antimedia.com. Doctors in Scotland are now prescribing nature 
to their patients. Booyah, bonus round. I like my nature. And, you know, unless there's, well, okay, the, I, I have to admit, I can't tell fibs. The last few days, I have not stepped outside barefoot with my puppies when I let them out in the mornings because it's freaking cold. And my, my little piggles, they go, yikes. And so, no, I haven't for the last few. But normally, when I let my dogs out in the morning, I have my house coat on. And that's the f wonderful thing about living out in the boonies. I can step outside and wander around my yard in my jams or my house coat or whatever. And I wander around with them barefoot. So I'm getting my grounding in. And I'm saying hello to the trees. And I'm getting my early morning sunrise. Unless, you know, except for the last few days where... Uh, I've seen the sun for a grand total of a half an hour over the last three days. Major suckage going on. <laughs> but I like doing that first thing in the morning. But these few, last few mornings, nah, I have wimped out. So nature is very good for you. Yes, listen to the trees. Listen to the birds. Let them wake you up and stimulate your mind first thing in the morning. And watching that early morning sunrise, very good for getting the firings going inside the brain. Very good for you. Now, back to this anti-media article. In an age of technology and constant immersion in the digital sphere, a new initiative in Shetland, Scotland is encouraging individuals suffering from chronic illness to spend more time in nature. Now, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, or RSBP, has teamed up with the National Health Service in Shetland to promote nature prescriptions. Mother Nature, she's got more in her medicine cabinet than you shake stick at, and that stick came from there too. Some people need to be smacked with it. Just saying. Now, doctors in the region can now officially prescribe nature to their patients. And according to a statement from the RSPB, from reducing cardiovascular disease, hypertension, stress levels, rates of aggression, and obesity, it can be used when treating type 2 diabetes or depression or when recovering from operations. And it has been proven over and over again to provide relief from anxiety. Plus, it's free and easily accessible to all. And yes, Vinny, I said easily. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes complete sense to work with a medical professional to connect people with nature. Why do you have to work with a medical professional? That's my thing. You need to get to know your doctor, number one, because odds are I'm going to just throw a number out there. I'm going to say about 80% of all medical professionals are just out there practicing. Heavy emphasis on practicing medicine on you. And they just know what they were taught and regurgitated in medical school. And that's as far as they go. They do not broaden their horizons one damn bit. It is very few doctors, medical professionals, that will look into other things besides what Big Pharma has been feeding them all through their educational process. Now, back to this article. They have an example of a 2015 study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, and it found that people who walked for 90 minutes in a natural area, as opposed to participants who walked in a high-traffic urban setting, showed decreased activity in the region of the brain associated with a key factor in depression. And that's what the Stanford News reported at the time. Now, the goal is to reconnect people with the outdoors, the organization says. We wanted to develop something that gently reminded people that they are part of the natural world and that invites them to go out and seek a personal connection. We are not, we are of nature. We are not separate from nature. We are of nature. People need to get that back into their mindset. Um, a group has produced, a, or the group has produced a leaflet as well as a calendar of seasonal activities. And the program, launched earlier this month, has drawn support from the medical community. 
I want to take part because the, pro the project provides a structured way for patients to access nature as part of a non-drug approach to health problems. Why does it have to be a structured way? All you people in your damn structures. Now the benefits to patients are that it is free, easily accessible, allows increased connection with surroundings, which hopefully leads to improved physical and mental health for individuals. That's from Dr. Chloe Evans, who's a general practitioner at the Scalloway Health Center. Now the goal of the initiative is to help people connect with nature due to its benefits on overall health, but it also encourages more physical activity. The RSPB explained that the benefits of physical activity are well documented, with regular physical activity reducing the risk of heart disease and strokes, diabetes, cancer, depression, anxiety, and sleep problems. Each and every one of those is a symptom, in my personal opinion, they are all symptoms of a dis-ease in your body. And once you find out what is causing that dis-ease, you can work to make the symptoms go away. But in, sadly, too much of the medical profession is focused on treating a symptom and not looking deeper for what is causing the causal factor. What is the dis-ease? And I do say that as two words because it is two in my personal opinion. Now to go on with their statement, there is now a body of evidence that people with a stronger connection to nature experience more life satisfaction, positive effect and vitality at levels associated with established um, predictors of satisfaction such as personal income. Now, it's widely understood that connections to nature come from more than physical activity or exercise in the outdoors alone. And that's the crux of the project. So, go out there and spend some time in nature. Listen to the birds. And if you just, you know, take out those stupid earbuds and just listen to the sounds around you, you'd be surprised how much you'll hear. Oh! Bye, Beetle! Have a wonderful evening, sweetheart. I know you've already left, but... <sighs> I love my nature time. I really do. I don't necessarily go out and hug trees, but... I go out and pull weeds and I work in the yard and I throw the ball for the dogs because if I'm outside and they're outside and there's a ball, it's time to throw it. That's that's their rule, not mine. So, okay, let me put a couple of little emoticons. Here we go. We'll do this one. Okay. Ooh, I got notifications over here on mine's. Now, <clears throat> speaking of mines, I did see a blog over here earlier that I thought, oh, I may want to get to that. It's from Luvin Luminous Sovereign, who is very prolific with the blogs over here. Oh, that coffee's good. And for the most part, I agree with a lot of what Luminous Sovereign says. This one is titled Real Freedom and the New World Order. And it's from June of this year. And yet I'm just now seeing it. What the hey? Okay, so to know freedom is to know nature. Living in harmony with nature leads to peace, prosperity, knowledge, truth, action, and freedom. Nature reflects the order of the universe. Living in opposition to nature leads to war, control, ignorance, fear, stagnation, and enslavement. Now, there exists two freedoms. There is real freedom and fake freedom. Real freedom corresponds to responsibility, taking responsibility, 
being responsible and acting responsibly. From this real freedom stems autonomy, which is self-governance, determination, and conscious decision-making in accord with causing no harm. Now, being responsible entails being responsible for the propagation of the best interest of oneself as well as the defense of oneself from harm. Making choices that are not anti, um, antithetical toward the self and having the capability to discern the difference between truth and falsehood and be capable to deal with falsehoods being propagated as reality in the stress-free manner. Now this involves self-mastery and discipline as well as courage. Not only does this benefit the self, but it overtly benefits those in society because confidence radiates encouragement in a system based on original truth. While on the other hand is the fake freedom which is the prevalent freedom touted in America today. 200 plus years ago, the inhabitants of what is today called the USA, a great lot of them knew real freedom. And the example I draw from is the Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, the orations of Patrick Henry, and the writings of Thomas Paine from his, his pamphlet entitled Common Sense. These are men and many others from that generation who were staunch individualists in tune with both physical and non-physical reality, mind and matter. Now fake freedom and the new world order. Because you see fake freedom is the freedom to consume anything regardless of how unhealthy it is for the person or how much grief it causes to the conscious thoughts of a person consuming that garbage. Fake freedom is the freedom to be lazy, to do the least amount of thinking possible and rely on the so-called experts, which you know, experts are former drips under pressure. But when you rely on the so-called experts to figure things out for you because, well, they're an expert in the field. They're an authority. Thank you, Larkin Rose, for defining that dumbest religion of all, the belief in authority. Mm. And so, fake freedom is the freedom to be an unfulfilled human who prefers to sit back and watch others live. He spends endless hours in undiscriminating television viewing. Fake freedom is using violence and coercion to propagate something called freedom. I have news for the advocates of this false freedom notion. It's called look at the damage you have done to the spirit of your fellow men and women. Are you happy yet? Or should I ask if you are fake happy or real happy? And do you discern the difference? Real freedom is having the free will ability to choose something without fear. Fake freedom is being coerced into pre-designated options under duress. Real freedom is being truly educated, given the tools to learn how to learn for oneself on one's own confidently, while fake-assed freedom is being told what is true and going along with it, being told a declarative sentence and accepting it without question. My issue with fake-assed freedom is that it's not truth and leads to destruction. It is a master deception, a lie. The lie is that if you surrender or sacrifice some of your liberty, someone else will take on your responsibility to decide what is best for you and society as a group. That's why we can't have nice things. Now, an obvious example of this is legislators. At all times, 
legislators will remove individual freedom for the best interest of the group. In the process, individuals always suffer by way of coercion, threats of violence, and duress. Though it sounds like a noble thing to do, sacrifice a little liberty so that the group may prosper. You know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. That mindset. It is an unsound idea simply because the group does not exist. The group only exists within the mind as a construct. And within this construct of the group exists what is actually true, real, and existent, the individual. There is no group. You may belong to a group of people who work on the same project, but there is no group benefit. Each is paid according to their individual talent and ambition. What the group seeks to do is conform all minds into one standardized musical note humming the same tune. This is called collectivism and it's conformity to a low standard. Now collectivism is the age-old idea that some are meant to rule while others are meant to be ruled. Leonard Peikoff, or Peikoff, however you pronounce that, illustrated this point beautifully in his book, The Objective. The philosophy of collectivism upholds the existence of a mystic and unperceivable social organism while denying the reality of perceived individuals, a view which implies that man's senses are not a valid instrument for perceiving reality. Collectivism maintains that an elite endowed with special mystic insight should rule men, which implies the existence of an elite source of knowledge, a fund of revelations inaccessible to logic and transcending the mind. Collectivism denies that men should deal with one another by voluntary means, settling their disputes by a process of rational persuasion. It declares that men should live under the reign of physical force as wielded by the dictator of the omnipotent state. A position which jettisons reason as the guide and arbiter of human relations. And for every aspect, the theory of collectivism points to the same conclusion. Collectivism and the advocacy of reason are philosophically antithetical. It is one or the other. Yes. Oh, see you later, Vinny. Have a wonderful evening. Stay warm, sweetheart. Now, to go on with this, I would only disagree with his calling collectivism a philosophy because collectivism is actually the absence of philosophy the destruction of sound reason, which in turn flows toward foolishness, not wisdom. And yes, that is a declarative statement, but it's true. And at this point, I would encourage you to please involve yourself in the study that truth and, or in the study of that truth, and come to your own understanding and promote that understanding far and wide to assist others in the inquiry necessary in gaining accuracy of navigation throughout our shared reality. <clears throat> and our shared reality is definitely seen differently by each and every one of us. It's just like a rainbow just stand a little bit different and the angle is just a little different and you see a completely different rainbow. Now, your eyes may not perceive the difference, but it is different. Everything is a matter of perspective. Now, <clears throat> this idea of a new world order of globalism is a twofold extremity. 
The word new implies that it's something that has not occurred in the past. A revolutionary idea that will change the paradigm or status quo. And something that has not yet been tested in physical reality. But on the contrary, what we refer to as New World o Order is a sugar-coated delusion to insist that something is new when it has only been repackaged, reformulated, reanimated from old ideas that have existed and do still persist. You know, kind of like aspartame has been repackaged. It's still bad juju. But now they call it something else, and I can't remember the new name to save my ass, so I'll just move along. Now, the collectivism of the group is merely the feudalism of history. Feudalism has been re-engineered, redesigned, and repackaged toward an audience of consumers and employees and human resources. Does that not explain it enough to you right there? You are human resources who do not possess the adequate context of history or, as I like to say, his story. And the route in which we've arrived to the point in time in which we are now present. And how are we to navigate forward into the future? with accuracy and arrive at a suitable destination if we do not have an accurate understanding of the map from whence we shall begin to sail. Like those people that are trying to erase history because I'm off and dead. We need to have that ugly history there and for no other reason than to say, baby, you have come a long way since then. But maybe with their erasing history, they're taking us back so that we can have a do-over and it can be even worse than it was then. Never challenge worse. Because worse will say, oh yeah? Now, to go on with this. To know where we are heading as a collective group on the sea of life, we must have a map of its terrain. Point A is the past. Point B is the present. And point C is the destination. Now, if we're presently experiencing tumultuous storms or hurricanes and whirlwinds, we must know how we arrived at this point. Because it is obvious that the captain of the ship, or you, were not paying attention. You were hoodwinked and your attention was placed elsewhere through careful manipulation. Once again, the circus with the piss poor clowns with the Kavanaugh shit. Now the globalists are correct in their rhetoric depicting the necessity of a new world order to usher in an age of peace. Because you know, everyone wants peace unless you're a psychopath or selfish or a little ego-driven narcissist. And yeah, they, uh, what they want is alignment with empathy and compassion. But the context in which the idea of the new world order will become manifest is the point that must be distinguished between. Because the global elitists have an undying thirst for wealth and power. And through the illusion of prestige, they shall justify the means in achieving their lifelong aspirations. Therefore, the context in which this supposed age of peace is broadcasted in um, a positive one. However, under careful examination of the motives and deeds that they use to catapult the world into this so-called new order, we find Orwellian doublethink to be the most prevalent absolute truths ever to be understood. So, it is critical to understand that the new world order was the founding of the United States of America. 
Never before in history was individual liberty fought for and actually established. With the individual liberty stems the gracious fellowship with nature that enables mankind to expand consciousness towards greater and greater heights of possibility. The founders and framers of this new revolutionary idea drew from nature the common sense of its principles and applied it towards mankind. The government for the people and by the people recognized the principle in nature that each individual is sovereign and responsible for their dominion. So with this responsibility, there is only two roads to go down, down the road of truth or down the road of error. To preserve life, liberty, and property, or to degrade life, make liberty conditional, and tax privately owned property, which is where we're at right now. So at this point, it's important to recognize that when this nation was founded, there were still being perpetuated ideologies, structures, and frames of thinking that led to error. All the governments of history and existing governments at the time were all based on the fallacious, erroneous models, meaning that they were not consistent with nature and her rules. The people themselves, which consisted of this new world, had to adjust to becoming free. So they can contend that the people, at the dawn of this new revolutionary idea, were now making a transition from one state into another, from being ruled into being masters, determining their own individual course. It was the ultimate Hegelian dialect where the thinking habits of the people were not squarely in alignment with self-government. In fact, a great majority actually insisted upon George Washington being their new king. This intermingling of falsehood and truth has, over the past 250 years, resulted in falsehood clearly being the victor of the two, because, as it is said, you must pluck the weeds, otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, they will take for themselves all of the nourishment from the flowers and overcome them completely. Well, that is firmly the case. All men are created equal, meaning we are all equally responsible for our thoughts and deeds. The laws of the universe are equally distributed among all men, and we will all equally atone for our mistakes. This is evident upon our creations. We create something like government, and we breathe life into it, and magically believe that the consequences of the actions government takes will be distributed solely upon government. Eh. Wrong answer. Any individual giving away their consent to be governed by its creation or government will be subjected to the misery of its erroneous fruits. The same is true for sculptors who create statues of gods who the people idolize as God themselves. The sculptor reaps what he sows by way of those around him consenting to error. So if you think we escape the effects, you are wrong. Yes, we created this tree and we called it government. That tree is producing fruit that the creators all partake and eat from and as a result of the law of cause and effect, the ill situation that we call freedom is manifest in our life as decay. True freedom is not a creation of the mind of man. Rather, it is derived from nature, not government. We all have this natural law of consequences governing our behaviors equally. This is an established, known, and understood principle of nature and is absolutely crucial, even vital, to grasp and understand in order to comprehend the foundation upon which liberal or individual liberty, rights, and dominion spring. 
So in the hierarchy of man, first cause is creator of the universe. Created all that exists, man, set apart from all other known creations, is endowed with free will and consciousness to create in like manner. Image of first cause. Man, which was created in the image of the creator, meaning has the same potential of creation by way of free will and consciousness, which are traits of the creator, whatever that may be, regardless it exists. Image of man is government. Created by the mind of man, either on first principles inherent in nature or on ideas with no inherent existence found in objective reality. Man's creations are either based on reality or illusion. So in the present time, there exists many individual minds thinking along varying paths of error. And I want to point out that the Bible translates simple error as sin or missing the mark, meaning your aim is off. So in order to get your aim on target, we have to practice. And this practice would be questioning our beliefs, which once again, belief has a lie in the middle of it. Ferret that lie out. We need to question those. Question our traditions, our perceptions in reality to what actually exists. We know that reason exists because we're using logic to compare and contrast against what is actually real, true, and good against something that either exists or is illusory. But it is required that one have faith in the power of reason to subdue fallacies because if you do not possess the faith necessary to promote its growth, you will not tend the garden of logic. So, the two mental creations of man, where you have positive mind control and negative mind control, one is in harmony with natural law, the other is in ignorance of natural law. Now, with the positive mind control in our mental creations of man, a.k.a. government, on the positive side, you have real freedom, obeying the dictates inherent in nature, built from solid principles. Your consent to contract among society is a reciprocal benefit to both yourself and others. Your unalienable rights are protected, defended, and celebrated, so long as you cause no harm to others. Freedom is free, and it is encouraged. Infinite possibilities are possible and mental stagnation is warded against. But, in the mental creation of man that is in ignorance of natural law, the government with the negative mind control, you have the illusion of freedom. You are obeying the dictates of legislators, built from whims and preferences. It gathers consent by way of dumbing you down, manufacturing fear response, and coercing you to obey, and threatening violence to cause harm to your liberty or theft of your property, and several other means. Freedom is not free, and you must pay to be unique. Otherwise, conformity, uniformity, is required. So, the hierarchy and control from the bottom up is in this societal structure in which we belong. The glue that binds us all um, is the institutions, religions, and organizations together. And it is a fearful control. I needed a sip. Now, fearful control is the belief in authority outside of oneself to control the behaviors of nouns, such as people, places, and things, out of fear. 
Now, the belief in the need to control things because one is fearful of chaos spawns an entire subset of corresponding ideas that promote the illusory stability of this belief. And I stress the point here, it is a false belief system. To believe in something does not denote one way or the other that it is true. To believe in something true makes it true if it's non-contradictory to law of identity, harmonious to existence, and prosperity toward the individual is what makes it true, good, and righteous. But the belief in system whose policies, dictates, and directives result in suffering, death, depression, despondency, desolation, depravity, please... I'm not trying to smoke that garbage. It should be obvious, common sense, and inherently known that any belief propagating contradiction, disorder, strife, coercion, and fear on any degree is false. Not based in truth. It's immoral and it should be shunned. And humankind right now is smoking that garbage and is high, or as I like to say, is feeding from that propaganda trough and swilling down the Fool-Aid. Humanity is lost in the clouds of irrationality. It's dumbed down, indoctrinated, and conditioned to respond emotionally. Because I'm my feels, and I'm off-ended. Man is caught in a cycle of disease spewing disease spawning greater and greater amounts of dis-ease. And then you have these talking heads in the media acting all sophisticated, using logical fallacies back and forth with persuasive rhetoric techniques to mislead and direct their audience towards illegitimate ideas that spawn even greater amounts of Dis-ease. Talking the dis-ease into greater heights of manifestation by airing this nonsense on a 24-hour stream of cable spewage networks which feed off your insecurity and dependence on them. And you have to be real high to be buying this garbage. But to top it off, You have those so-called intellectuals from the ivory towers of educraption, the PhD master's degrees who climbed up there through the ladder of success by the book, following all the rules on what to do to be somebody important who spew ever and ever greater and greater loads upon loads of regurgitated, fear-driven, fallacious structures of logic that cramp even sometimes the most well-trained minds to wander into oblivion. But when you reflect on what truth really is and compare it to how things actually are, you realize It's just more complicated bullshit that is tied into the other piles of manure put there to deflect you, the individual, from discovering the principles that are based in truth. This planet has become a planetary disposal of compete or complete rotting bullshit on the one hand, while the other hand, the clean hand, is tucked away and forgotten about. So when man, in his feeble-minded, weakened state of ignorance, was capitalized on by those who were still using their reasoning capacities, these guys, being selfish and narcissistic, monopolized the fable of authority into trusting minds of their victims. Now it's possible, and there's no reason to doubt, That like today, psychopaths have always been on the hunt for unwitting, trusting victims. Like vampires, psychopaths literally suck the last drop of life force from their victims. And here's a possibility of 
how it could have went down. In ancient times, before the first civilization of Earth, a band of roving psychopaths, secondary psychopaths, and their mind-controlled slaves began creating war and using violence, coercion, and threats to dominate other tribes and bands or groups of people. There is evidence to support this theory in anthropology. But there's even more damning evidence to prove this is still the case today. In the fields of psychology and political science, sociology, government, corporate structures, Wall Street, religious institutions, etc., etc., etc. Everywhere you look in society, true concepts are inverted to support deceptive ideologies. It's pathetic that it persists today. The Founding Fathers were all well aware of tyranny and worked their asses off to defeat it. But they could not defeat it. And it's because of the majority of people who were conditioned by the privilege, vanity, pride, and selfish desire that caused tyranny to swing back around and chop America in the neck. There is much beautifully written history on the founding of America and many quotes by the founders that I'll post one day that encapsulates the absolute enlightenment these men possessed. And if you compare that strength, honor, and courage of those days in relation to the tolerance, acceptance, and trust of today, it will make you want to take a shit on this government and the people who claim to be active. Now the clean hand, it has no drama. People are emotionally addicted to drama. Thus they will do anything to run in the opposite direction of the clean hand. This is why reality TV shows are rising off the charts, which is basically what DC is. You watch C-SPAN, that's reality TV entertainment and piss poor yeah we have 800 cable TV stations 350 sports channels 150 news channels and the rest are trivial bullshit so-called reality TV and vampire monologues etc yeah the clean hand has no care about that trivial nonsense the clean hand cares about the greater good <clears throat> the real greater good. The greater good that does not involve profit, greed, lust, twisted desires of the flesh, robbing someone to get ahead in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, worrying about death, worrying about bills, worrying about your children, stressing out over offending someone, fearing getting pulled over for a violation of the code. The clean hand does not concern itself with the nonsense, nor does it concern itself with the little ego self. The clean hand is only concerned with equality, prosperity for all, abundance, true order, true care, true principles, natural law, original essences of things, Pure substances, purity of self leading to purity of action leading to purity of the world, pattern recognition, logical methods, ascending structures leading to more and more freedom. This is not some fancy ideology or utopian fantasy. This is the true nature of the operational structure of our universe. The ancient Greeks named the universe cosmos, which literally means harmony or order. Compare that to how science depicts our universe today, random and by chance. So if you study the clean hand, you will come to find that our so-called enlightened people of today are actually dumber than they've ever been. The so-called Illuminati are actually disseminating darkness and destruction. 
The clean hand is about building something that is lasting forever and true. The Bible speaks of heaven on earth to come, and it will come. This post here is a trumpet call to usher in that heaven on earth. The clean hand will not get dirty in the process of the destruction of the hand holding the pile of manure. That hand will simply be cut off by the parable illustrated in Matthew 5.30. If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. An allegory regarding deception. It must be removed, otherwise it will infect the truth and overcome it. The clean hand is about victory over the desires of the flesh and these selfish desires must be attended to with painful exertions. But it must be done. All our senses and powers must be kept from those things which lead to transgression against the clean hand. Those who lead others into temptation to commit transgressions against the natural order of the universe make themselves guilty of their errors and will be accountable for it, accountable for it through the reaping of what they sow. Sowing negative thoughts or emotions and actions into the world reap negative consequences as a result. This is the simple truth of nature and her gentle laws. If painful withdrawals from nasty habits are submitted to, that our lives may be saved, what ought our minds to shrink from when the salvation of our souls is concerned? There is tender mercy under all the sacred requirements, and there is requirements to receive the outcomes that we claim to want. Grace and consolation of the clean hand will enable us to attend to them. So to demystify what I'm conveying here, the clean hand is the spirit and the filthy hand is the flesh. The clean hand is truth and the filthy hand is sin, error, transgression against the clean hand. Our minds contain elements of both hands simultaneously. Our best defense against poison entering our minds is learning the structural method of logic as laid out by Aristotle and expounded upon by Thomas Aquinas and John Locke. And our best route to conveying pure wisdom into the world is the structural method of rhetoric laid out by Aristotle. Aristotle himself held truth to be the highest aspiration whereas the sophists held the self-desire of appearing correct to be the highest. The sophists do not elevate truth. They elevate errors, selfishness, egomania, vanity, pride, wealth, power. All the same exact forces of demons that we are contending with today. The clean hand is God. It's holy, whole, holistic, righteous. Right is where our rights spring from, whereas the filthy hand lays down seeds of evil spawns, satanic ideologies, confused thoughts, foolish actions, emotional outcries, theft of rights, issues privilege, and declares authority. The clean hand washes the filth away. The filthy hand spreads germs, disease, malcontent, and distress. The clean hand is sovereign unto responsibility, integrity, honesty, and respect, whereas the filthy hand is sovereign by prestige only. Now, sovereignty, yeah, you may think that the church is built on the authority of the word, and no, it's not, or the authority of God, and no, it's not, 
or the authority of Christ. No, it's not. It's built off of the authority of men. Fearful men who desire power, authority over others. All religions are subservient to the system that man himself has constructed and consented to call government or status quo or religion or the matrix or whatever you wish to call it. The God of the system is the created God of man, not the all true creator. Everything is inverted. The all true creator is, has no necessity for churches because the whole of nature is the church. But even closer to heart, each individual body is the temple of God because it holds the mind within the realm of matter to manifest its ever flowing brilliance. So let's not make the grave mistake of ignoring patterns that are screaming at us up front and center. The governments and its many tentacles, offspring, and alliances are all an organized, standardized, universally tied together imitation of the natural order of the universe. Not just an imitation, but rather a degradation, an obfuscation, a complete abomination through and through. And these tentacles and offspring of government include the financial system, the varying religions, including Eastern and New Age religions, scientism, and especially the public schooling system based off of the Prussian model and propagated throughout the Western world in the name of scientific engineering. Now to paraphrase, I'm not claiming that true education, true science, true religion, and money cannot exist. On the contrary, the distinction I'm attempting to make here is that there exists a true concept and then an overlapping retardation of that true concept that the system labels as truth with a trademark, copyright, and symbol that is completely idolatrous against the first foundations of what is. The current so-called education system is there to perpetuate the control system by indoctrinating the dictates of the operation of the system, i.e. rules of the game. Police and military are there to coerce the minds of the people into accepting the dictates in which the system operates. The financial system is in place to bind the people to a system and prevent them from operating outside the system. More or less, each institution, bureaucracy, agency, office, and party is there to divide you and make you dependent. Your dependency is a requirement for the system to maintain its facade of legitimacy. So this fake and fictional legitimacy and your division from each other and from yourselves is required to pit you against each other and keep the focus away from the root origin of the deception. And if people really investigated with a fine tooth comb, the theories of the so-called science they would find that a huge majority of what children are taught about the world is corrupted hypothesis rather than cold hard facts. Theories are not truth and are therefore not science, but science fiction. So now, why would anyone want to operate outside the system? It's such a wonderful system. Sure, it's flawed, but that's why we're here to serve the current system and fix it. We can make it work, right? The system has problems, but that's why we pass new laws and change old ones to work out the kinks, right? We sure, yeah, we're sure to stumble upon the key to peace using this method, right? 
Well, man has been, since the beginning, defying the natural order of things, literally, deluding himself into smoking his own bullshit. Man has been and is getting high on his own stash. It's no wonder he's broken, suffering, and dumbed down to the level of domesticated. This is why there is a growing movement today who are expanding freedom and liberty by being the change they wish to see in the world. Individuals who have come to understand that truth exists and there is a veil of deception that one must remove to uncover the truth. The practice or to practice right thoughts, emotions and actions one literally has to divorce oneself from the system. One must begin to understand who they truly are and will or with the desire to become that which is alignment with truth. Sovereignty is the destiny. Well, Luminous Sovereign, thank you ever so much. That was very long, very in-depth, and very informative. And I agree with quite a bit of it. So, get that chair there and put it over on this effing site, because this, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I, if I bored you to tears, eh, sorry. I'm not really sorry, but eh. You know, you just weren't ready for it yet. That's okay. I was ready for that. Which is probably why I didn't see it till now. Because people are... It doesn't make any difference how much you preach to someone, how many pieces of evidence you give them, how many facts you spew, how you grab them by the hand and lead them down that path. If they aren't ready to see it and accept it and understand it, you're wasting your time because they're going to turn tail and run away and probably rat your ass out in the meantime because you shared facts and truth and it was contrary to what we've been taught and how dare you. And that's how the system continues working because it's convinced people that they need to rat you out because you're a troublemaker. You're a rabble rouser. You're contrary. And I enjoy it. <laughs> so, now that I've gotten through all that wonderful stuff, and it is getting close to end of my time, I need to check out the pig because I need to know what happened this date in history. Let's have a little fun stuff. Let's have a little silly because, you know, you got to have time to let that digest and sometimes a little bit of silly to help wash it down. It's just what you need. It's what Dr. Graham ordered. <laughs> now, the word for the day is rampage and it's uh, the head-breaking thuggery that serves as jackass party electoral pollux uh, politics in the 21st century. Politics breaking down to its core. Many bloodsuckers. Mm -hmm. In the quotable quotes section, the easiest way to restrict freedom of speech on campuses is by claiming that some sort of hate speech has been used. Right? I'm a purveyor of hate speech. This is what I've been told by protesters outside. Ben Shapiro said at an event, which he said this at an event, which was hosted by the USC chapter of Young Americans for Freedom. Well, it's hate speech if it's somebody, if it gets somebody in the feels and it makes them really hate what you just said, you big meanie poo poo head. So, Let's see. Scrolling down to this date in history. Where is it? There it is. 
The 10th of October, 1938, Xerox revolutionizes office technology with the photocopy machine. Butt crack scans and other unintended uses of the gizmo locked and loaded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have never done the butt crack scan, but I have done some face scans. <laughs> and wow, it's not attractive. This date in history, the 10th of October, 1958, country warbler and terminally fun wench, Tanya Tucker, born in Mexas. Ah, Tanya Tucker's older than me. Cool. This date in history, the 10th of October, 1973, nattering nabobs of negativ negativism get the last laugh when Vice President Spiro Agnew pleads no contest to charges of tax evasion, then resigns as Vice President. Hmm. If you can't get him on anything else, get him on tax evasion. As if that was ever properly ratified in the first place. But I digress. So, let's see. What else is over here on... Um, oh, in their steaming loads. Let's check this out. Ariel Dumas apparently stepped in a steaming load, according to these guys over here on Pig, Hambo and Porcus. With her tweet, Whatever happens, I'm just glad we ruined Brett Kavanaugh's life. The writer of this vile tweet is a writer on the Stephen Colbert show and has nearly 40,000 followers on Twitter. As the Senate confirmation vote was gearing up, she wanted everyone to know that whatever happens, she's just glad she ruined a man's life. Never mind if he was innocent, never mind any of the facts or corroborations or shifting stories of his accusers, the important thing to her was ruining his life. That was what mattered. And, you know, that was what they kept in your field of vision. Not letting you see any of, you know, how he voted on issues like the Fourth Amendment. You know, how he participated in the Patriot Act. You know, some of the other ugly little things that he did in his past. No, we don't want you seeing that kind of stuff because that's real. This is just nonsense to get you in the feels. Oh, well, come on over to PIGazette.com and say hi to Hambo and Porcus. And they may be high. You never know. I got to check out the pig pick of the day. Um, oh, my God. And it is a meme, and it is an awesome meme, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab that and put that over here in the RLM link. Because, yeah, in the feels, that's where it's going to get you. Uh, da -da. Oh. Okay. So... Back to my pocket I go, because I do know I have some other fun things stashed in there. Now, let's get to something that's good for you, shall we? Um, tis the season to be wheezing. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Cowboy Tech. Um, okay, so do I want to give you, I may go ahead and give you that anyway. Um, I think Cowboy Tech is the one that actually shared this one. Over on realliberty.org. It's from humansarefree.com. Oncologists don't like baking soda cancer treatment because it's too effective and too cheap. Huh. So even the most aggressive cancers, which have metastasized, have been reversed with baking soda cancer treatments. Now, although chemotherapy is toxic to all cells, it represents on, um, the only measure that oncologists employ in their practice to almost all cancer patients. Why? Because it's very freaking lucrative. That's why. Follow the money. In fact, 9 out of 10 cancer patients agree to chemotherapy first without investigating other less invasive options. Doctors 
and pharmaceutical companies make money from it, hand over fist. And that's the only reason chemotherapy is still used. Well, no, it's not the only reason, but it's a really big share of it. And not because it's effective or decreases morbidity or mortality or diminishes any specific cancer rates. In fact, it does the opposite. Chemotherapy boosts cancer growth and long-term mortality rates, and oncologists know it. Now, a few years ago, University of Arizona Cancer Center member Dr. Mark Pagel received a $2 million grant from the National Institutes of Health to study the effectiveness, effectiveness of personalized baking soda cancer treatment for breast cancer. Obviously, there are people in the know who have understood that sodium bicarbonate, that same stuff that can save a person's life in the emergency room in a heartbeat, is a primary cancer treatment option of the safest and most effective kind. Now studies have shown that dietary measures to boost bicarbonate levels can increase the pH of acidic tumors without upsetting the pH of the blood and healthy tissues. Animal models of human breast cancer show that oral sodium bicarbonate does indeed make tumors more alkaline and inhibit Ma uh, yeah, metastasis. I hate them cancer words. Now, based on these studies, plus the fact that baking soda is safe and well tolerated, world renowned doctors such as Dr. Julian Whitaker have adopted successful cancer treatment protocols as part of an overall nutritional and immune support program for patients who are dealing with the dis ease. Now, Whitaker's protocol uses 12 grams or two rounded teaspoons of baking soda mixed in two cups of water, along with a low-cal sweetener of your choice. I would use either honey or stevia myself. Now, you sip this mi mixture over the course of an hour or two and repeat for a total of three times a day. One man claims that he's found a cure for cancer using baking soda and molasses and actually successfully treated his own disease. Now when taken orally with water, especially water hot, uh, with high magnesium content, and when used transdermally in medicinal baths, sodium bicarbonate becomes a first line med medicinal, yeah, first line medicinal for the treatment of cancer, and also kidney disease, diabetes, influenza, and even the common cold which is why at least three times a week, I have a nice long soak in Epsom salt and baking soda and some essential oils, just to help clean my system and get those good minerals absorbed because they absorb through the soles of your feet. Um, it's also a powerful buffer against radiation exposure, so everyone should be up to speed on its use. Everybody's physiology is under heavy nuclear attack from strong radioactive winds that are circling the northern hemisphere. Now, Dr. Robert Giles is a, and his colleagues have already demonstrated that pretreatment of mice with baking soda results in the alkalinization of the area around the tumors. The same researchers reported that bicarbonate increases tumor pH and also inhibits spontaneous ma um, mastitis in uh, mice with breast cancer. So what is baking soda? It's a white crystalline solid that appears as a fine powder. It's also called cooking soda, bread soda, and bicarbonate of soda. Its chemical name is sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen bicarbonate. Now, baking soda is different from washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, although they share the same slightly salty and alkaline taste. Now, this widely used soda is commonly dissolved in mineral water and is used as a leavening agent in baking. It works as a leavening agent in neutralizing the acidic contents of batter and the neutralization releases carbon dioxide and leads to the raising or expansion of baked breads. And trust me, carbon dioxide is not causing global warming. Let's just throw that in there too. 
Baking soda has also been used to soften vegetables and to tenderize meat. It's a household chemical. Um, it's used as a cleaning agent. It can be used in toothpaste, which I use that with coconut oil and essential oils instead of the fluoridated crap. And uh, it also serves as an antiseptic, acid neutralizer, whitening agent, plaque removing agent, as well as a cleaning agent. You can also use it to make deodorants and shampoos. Um, let's see. Now the pH of our tissues and the body fluids is crucial and central because it affects and mirrors the state of our health, of our inner cleanliness. The closer the pH is to 7.35 to, um, between 7.35 and 7.45, the higher our level of health and well-being. So staying within this range, excuse me, dramatically increases our ability to resist acute illness like colds and flus, as well as the onset of cancer and other diseases. See, if your pH is not balanced properly, and a lot of that is because of the nasty crap that you're eating. So, keeping your pH within the healthy range also involves a necessary lifestyle and dietary change that will protect us over the long term while the use of sodium bicarbonate gives us a jump start towards in increased alkalinity. pH scale is like a thermometer showing increases and decreases in the acid and alkaline content of fluids. And deviations above or below that 7.35 to 7.45 pH range um, in a tightly controlled blood can signal potentially serious and dangerous symptoms or states of dis-ease. So when the body can no longer effectively neutralize or eliminate the acids, it relocates them within the body's extracellular fluids and connective tissue cells, directly compromising cellular um, integrity. Now conversely, when the body becomes too alkaline from too much bicarbonate in the blood, metabolic alkal alkalosis occurs, which can lead to serious conditions if not corrected quickly. So, John Barron presents a way of looking at pH that opens up one of the major benefits of alkaline water. Hydrogen ions tie up oxygen, and that means that the more acid a liquid is, the less available the oxygen in it. Every cell in your body requires oxygen for life and to maintain optimum health. So when you combine that with what we know about hydrogen ions, and we see that the more acid the blood, the lower the pH, the less, less oxygen is available for use by the cells. So without going into a discussion of the chemistry involved, just understand that it's the same mechanism involved when acid rain kills a lake. The fish literally suffocate to death because the acid in the lake binds up all the available oxygen. So, it's not that the oxygen has gone anywhere, it's just no longer available. And conversely, if you raise the pH of the lake, make it more alkaline, oxygen is now available and the lake comes back to life. Now incidentally, it's worth noting that cancer is related to an acid environment or lack of oxygen. The higher the pH, the more oxygen present in the cells of the body, the harder it is for cancer to thrive. Understanding this is important for two reasons. Number one, it reveals one of the primary benefits of alkaline water more available oxygen in the system, and number two, it explains why alkaline water helps fight cancer. Now this article does go on a little bit more, but I am running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and share it with you here in the chat, because I think y'all need it. Um, now, oh, I have lambs quarters and plantain and other weeds growing all over the place as well. I love to have those lovely, healthy, quote unquote, weeds growing in my yard. And I, a few, I found out this year another one that my mother said, oh, no, 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 don't pull that because the monarch butterflies 
get food from that. So I have another weed that I have included in the what's allowed to grow in my yard kind of thing. So, okay. Now, one other thing I had in my pocket that's seen as how we are going into the uh, cold and flu season. It's a recipe for homemade honey lemon cough drops with ginger. And... Um, it is the season to be wheezing, coughing, and sneezing, and hacking, and sniffling, and all that other fun stuff. Now, this recipe um, is one half cup of raw buckwheat honey. That's that's what this person. I get my honey from someone about sixty miles away. It is raw honey, raw organic honey, and uh, two tablespoons of organic lemon juice or for me I will use my lemon essential oil and just use a few drops of that and then a teaspoon of freshly grated ginger root which hey booyah I'm growing ginger root and it's doing quite well as a matter of fact I have some I need to harvest now optionally for dusting it use one fourth cup of powdered cane sugar um, and you can mix that with a teaspoon of powdered vitamin C and uh, it gives it kind of a little tart taste to it so this is something for seeing as how we're coming into the season of sneezing and a wheezing and you make it yourself so um, thank you all for listening in this evening on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Also, be sure to check in. Uh, Vinny will be on at noon Central Time, I believe, for Ponder Gander on Friday. Let me double check that. I think I opened up that link, and I may not have. I don't know. I didn't get that one. Um, but yeah. I am just about out of time, so y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening, and I hope tomorrow is just totally splendiferous for you as well. I need to go and stir the soup that I have had simmering. I used some ham and some corn and peas and green beans and zucchini garden stuff. Well, except for the ham. The ham wasn't garden stuff. But the rest of it's all garden stuff. And uh, I'm going to put some homemade egg noodles in there. And yum, 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 chow down time. So until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>